Hi, in this video we're going to look at joint covalent structures such as diamond, silica and graphite and then we'll have a look at some of their properties and relate these properties to their structure. Now most of the covalent substances that you will have met so far have been small molecular structures. That is, structures composed of only a few atoms bonded together. For example, water, carbon dioxide, methane and ammonia are all covalent substances with small molecular structures. Substances with these molecular structures will have low melting and boiling points and are likely to be liquids or gases at room temperature. However, not all covalent substances have these small molecular structures. The elements carbon and silicon in group 4 of the periodic table are able to form joint covalent structures. For example, diamond and graphite are two covalent substances made up of only the element carbon, but these substances have giant covalent structures as shown on screen. Iodine and bromine are two halogens found in group 7 of the periodic table. Both iodine and bromine consist of small diatomic molecules, that is, a small molecule composed of only two atoms, as shown on the screen. Now the bond holding these molecules together is a strong covalent bond, but the bonding between different molecules, that is, the intermolecular bonding, is very weak and easily broken. This weak intermolecular bonding is one of the main reasons why small covalent molecules are mostly gases and liquids with low melting and boiling points. Now diamond does not have a molecular structure but has a giant covalent structure. Part of this structure is shown on the screen. In this giant structure, each carbon atom makes four strong covalent bonds. To melt diamond, you would have to break all these strong covalent bonds and this would require a very large amount of energy. To melt a diamond, you would have to heat it to a temperature in excess of 3,500 degrees Celsius. The diamond structure is a crystalline structure. It is built up with lots of small tetrahedral units consisting of five carbon atoms which simply link together to form the giant covalent structure. This is shown on screen. Now in a covalent bond, the electrons are held firmly in place and cannot move and this means that diamond will be an electrical insulator. Diamond and graphite are two allotropes of the element carbon, that is different forms of the element carbon. Like diamond, graphite has a giant covalent structure, but the carbon atoms are arranged very differently in graphite and this leads to some very different properties. The graphite structure looks like a flat layer of hexagons with carbon atoms placed at all the corners of the hexagons which make up the structure. The layers of hexagons are flat and a side view of the graphite structure would simply look like flat layers of carbon atoms stacked one on top of the other. Now carbon is in group 4 of the periodic table and obviously it should make 4 covalent bonds since it's got 4 valency electrons in the outer shell. But the carbon atoms in graphite only make 3 bonds. This means that there is one free or delocalized electron per carbon atom and this delocalized electron is free to move from one carbon atom to the next in the flat layers of hexagons. This means that graphite is an electrical conductor, unlike diamond, which is an electrical insulator. In the top view of the graphite structure, we can see that most of the carbon atoms make three covalent bonds. Now these covalent bonds are very strong and require a large amount of energy to break them. However, in the side view, there is only weak intermolecular bonding between the flat layers of carbon atoms, which means that these weak bonds will be easy to break. So while diamond is the hardest known natural substance, graphite is soft and slippery due to the fact that when pushed, these weak intermolecular bonds will break. Now as an example, one of the main uses of graphite is this pencil lead. So imagine writing with a pencil on some paper. When you push down on the pencil, you will be breaking the weak intermolecular bonds and leaving layers of flat hexagon carbon atoms on the paper as you write. The two diagrams on screen show two examples of graphite conducting electricity. You will have no doubt used electrodes and signs to pass an electrical current through solutions. These electrodes in the beaker are made of graphite. You can also show that graphite in a pencil lead will conduct electricity by simply connecting it in a circuit with a cell and a bulb. To summarise what we have covered so far, we could say that 
Both diamond and graphite have high melting points due to their giant structure which contains lots of strong covalent bonds. If you wanted to melt either diamond or graphite then you would have to break all these strong covalent bonds in the two giant and macromolecular structures. Diamond is an electrical insulator since it has no free moving or delocalized electrons but each carbon atom in graphite only makes three strong covalent bonds which leaves one free or delocalized electron per carbon atom. These delocalized electrons can move freely and this allows graphite to conduct electricity. These delocalized electrons are similar to the ones found in metallic bonding. Finally, diamond is the hardest natural substance known because it is a giant structure where each carbon atom makes four strong covalent bonds. However, graphite is soft and slippery due to the weak intermolecular bonding between the flat layers of hexagon atoms. Carbon and silicon are two elements found in group 4 of the periodic table. Now, just as carbon can form giant covalent structures such as diamond, silicon can also form these giant covalent structures. The two diagrams shown on the screen show the structures of diamond and silicon. These two structures, as you can see, are almost identical. Now, in your science exam, you could be asked about the structure of silicon dioxide, often called silica. Silicon dioxide is the main component found in sand and its chemical formula is SiO2. Now, in diamond, each carbon atom makes four strong covalent bonds to four other carbon atoms. In silicon dioxide or silica, each silicon atom makes four strong covalent bonds to oxygen atoms, again as shown in the diagram on the screen. These bonds are very strong, which means that silicon dioxide will have a high melting point due to the large number of strong covalent bonds that would have to be broken in order to melt it. And like diamond and most covalent substances, it is an electrical insulator. And also like diamond, it is insoluble in water and most solvents.